Hello YouTubers, this is a new session where I get to show you, you know, some of the concepts and the ideas of the engineering standard being applied to different programming languages. Uh, we did a little bit of tour and journey with Go programming language. We, we tried to apply some concepts like building brokers and services and then trying to test these services at a very basic minimum level. I truly appreciate the uh, engineers from the Go community th reaching out and trying to kind of help me understand, you know, something that I just learned about a couple of hours ago and said, okay, no, we named this, these things. There are some concepts and ideas that you don't actually get to be uh, to get the kind of exposure to it by sitting in one particular framework on one programming language. So, uh, you know, I thought that was a fun experience and, you know, I decided that I'm going to start, you know, trying to kind of apply the standard, you know, to different languages and different, you know, frameworks and just see how much a language can support this kind of mentality or mindset when you're trying to architect uh, software. So for, for people who are not familiar with what the standard is, it's basically a, a structure or a pattern that helps you build maintainable software, maintainable simple software that stays at level zero, as I call it, which basically means that anybody, no matter how many ex years of experience they have, they can come in and actually maintain your system and be able to kind of understand it. Uh, the standard is built on a theory called the tri nature of everything. And what this theory, you know, dictates, like really, really quick, because there's a whole book, and I'm gonna kind of drop a link in the, uh, in the, in the uh, video description, just so you know. The theory says any system out there, software or not, has either dependencies and purposes and exposures, right? So in your typical, if you're building a simple software or an API or whatever, you're gonna have a broker that talks to a database, for instance, and then you have a service that's kind of doing all the business logic and validation. Maybe you have an API or a controller, you know, that basically exposes, you know, all that work of the service to the outside world. There's a huge theory behind this, a big community behind this. I'll drop all the links down there just so you kind of, you know, give you that kind of idea of what the standard is and how people kind of build uh, build systems, you know, in, in one w particular way or another. This language that I'm going to be experimenting with, though, is very special. It's very near and dear to my heart because, you know, this is one of the languages that I've actually, not a lot of people probably know this, but I actually started, you know, kind of formalizing and building some ideas and concepts around, you know, kind of advocating for the engineering standards from uh, working with Scala. Scala is an amazing, amazing programming language. It basically helps you and gives you the ability to kind of think. You feel like you're thinking, it kind of gives you like this this weird feeling that you are a, a, a truly a computer scientist, right? It's a functional programming language that kind of respects your brain. It respects your intellect. It kind of plays with you in a certain way as long as you can kind of wrap your mind around some of the ideas, you know, and some of the functional uh, ideas that it's trying to implement. It's also object oriented. It's, it's actually a cute language. And, you know, you can quote me on this. Scala is really cute because it kind of gives you this um, uh, kind of feeling that you don't have to write code, you know, if you don't need to, you know, very short, precise, simple things. Some of it I really wish we had in C-sharp, hopefully soon, you know, we can kind of adapt to these patterns, but it's definitely a great, a great programming language. So, so let me just tell you what I'm going to do here today. I'm going to implement, just like I did with Go, you know, I'm going to implement a simple uh, 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 program that basically goes and says, here is a storage broker for a student service, and here's a student service. Right, and then we're gonna go and write a unit test for these two things, right? A simple unit test that can kind of show us how things work. Uh, one of the things that we can use here is IntelliJ. This is me playing around with Rust. You don't have to worry about that. Let's create a new project here. So here it is. So you, you select Scala, and then I selected SBT. I think it stands for Scala Build Task or something like that. And then I'm gonna go here and say Standard Scala. Yeah, let's open it in this window. Why not? Okay, here we go. I hope it kind of cleans up all the Rust stuff that I'm trying to dealing with. Rust is just a whole different beast that you kind of need to kind of think about and explore. Uh, let's see here. Did it actually open it? Uh, let's see. I should have opened it in another um, 
open recent scala standard yeah let's open it in a new window let's just avoid the traffic okay so when you create a new scala program you have two things here you have scala scala you have a test and main right so what we're going to do here i'm going to start kind of pulling my uh all my folders and everything inside that kind of main folder i think you can distribute it anywhere you want but let's just start from here and create a package i'm going to call it brokers dot storages so here's another cool thing that i don't see in in net or visual studio see i did brokers dot storages so that means if i have a different kind of broker which is brokers dot let's say i don't know notifications like this it will nest very nicely and i think this is an intellij thing you know this is not specifically a scala thing it's an intellij thing which is pretty cool uh let's delete this guy we don't need it here uh how do you how do you get rid of that uh delete there you go one thing that's not cool is that with refactor you can delete a file from refactor but you can't delete a directory from refactor which is kind of weird to me i'm gonna violate some of scala rules in here i might go and say so i need a trait they don't really have a naming convention for traits. Traits is basically the interface, right? And since most of the audience, the people I'm talking to are .NET folks, it's probably better if I go and say I storage broker, the way we name, you know, uh, things in, in, in .NET so people kind of understand where I'm coming from here. Okay, I also need models. Let's go and create a bunch of models. So here's models. And then under models, I'm going to go and create students. I should, I should have just kind of leverage. And then I'm going to create a Scala class, and I'm going to call it student. So that's my student. Watch how beautiful this is. You can go here and say, for my student class, I can just go and say it's a, a, a variable that's a name, that's a string. And that's your input parameters. That's it. You just created a class, just like that. How crazy is that? And and for for the Scala gurus out there, you know, again, you know, I put these videos as far as I remember. It's, it's been a long time. I actually worked with Scala, but I think you know this is the proper way to do it. Something like that. So this here basically is the equivalent of C sharp when you go and say public class student, and then you go and say public string uh, name get set see all that work that i just did you can just do all of that very easily in scala just by doing that right someone might say well i want to do more things of course you can go here and do this and you can define functions and you can do setters and getters and whatever you need it's kind of this is again like i said to you it's a cute language right it it, it kind of works with you to get your idea out the door as soon as as soon as fast as possible while maintaining a sense of beauty you know, to the language itself. It does maintain a sense of beauty of how it, it expresses idea and kind of mirror your ideas and all that. Okay, let's go back to the storage broker in here. This storage broker needs to define a function called insert student, right? And this insert student function will take in a student variable of type student, just like that. You see the package, the package is basically equivalent of a namespace. In, in the .NET world. And then the import is the equivalent of usings, right? So let's say someone might here say, okay, I don't want, I want all the models under students, so you can do underscore like this. So now you're pulling everything under, and, and I think in, in Java you would do this, but in Scala you would do something like this. By the way, Scala, I think, is running on GV, JVM as well. That's why it plays with Java very well. It's Java's smart cousin. That's what Scala is, the best way I could describe it. It's Java's smart, smart cousin, okay? Anyway, how do you say that this interface returns something? You go here and say, you know, kind of a colon, and then this is how it's returning things. I think Alt-Enter is how you... No, I don't want to do that. Yeah, Alt-Enter in IntelliJ, or at least the version that I'm using, is how you're basically doing this, this nice uh, little uh, number in here. Okay, so that's an interface. Let's go create an implementation of that interface. So let's go here and say this is a class. It's called Storage Broker. And then in here, you can go and say extends i Storage Broker. And then if you do if you do an Alt Enter in here, it will say go ahead and implement the method. Boom, just like that. Look at this. You'll find a lot of these things here in Scala. You'll see like question mark question question. This basically means 
there's nothing here i don't know what's coming you know and i think it's pretty cute i told you before this is actually really cool what are these question marks it basically says hey i think an implementation is required in here right these three question marks it basically say there's nothing in here yet because this is a broker what i'm going to do i'm going to go and say this broker just is going to return the student here's another cool thing you don't have to say return like that you could just say student and it knows exactly what you're trying to say one thing i don't like this little equal is unnecessary but it's a functional language it thinks of everything as values i think it thinks of everything as values and references and functions so it i guess you know how they decided to do this is to equate every function to like i'm assuming that this is from here to here this is a function or an anonymous function in some way i don't know i could be wrong okay so that means i could just do this then i could just go like this and say student and that will work too right that's pretty cool uh okay so that's the implementation of this i have a storage broker let's go ahead and create a service so here's services dot foundations dot students just like that and then i'm going to create an interface so here is uh, a trait and that's i student service there you go and my i student service requires a function called add student that takes in student as an input parameter here's alt enter pull in here you go alt enter and then it re it should return a student model so that's an interface see it's 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 an amazing language beautiful language it's playing with you right let's add an implementation for this so this is a student service like this and then I hate that I have to kind of zoom in with every file that's kind of dumb there must be a way that you can do this nicely how do you inject a dependency in a student service you just go here and say this is my storage broker right and that guy requires that interface so my I storage broker in here will basically pull in this as a dependency but it also extends that's your equivalent of implement i student service okay so now this guy's complaining it's saying i don't have an implementation here's your implementation and we are intentionally not going to add an implementation there i'm going to go here and say yep you know this is my implementation question mark question mark you know whatever that means we'll see what that means in a second okay so i can't add because this is test driven approach I can't really add a I can't add an implementation to this unless I have a failing test that tells me you need to add an implementation to this right so that brings us down to this second folder down here I'm gonna go here and create a folder called services foundations students and then I'm gonna create just a tiny nice file in here I'm gonna call it a a student service test Scala super forgiving with naming conventions super cute it will let you kind of do whatever you want to do with your naming conventions unlike go which dictate that your test has to start with the with the name prefix craziness I, I don't you know it's crazy so okay <clears throat> okay so so I have this class and this is my test and whatnot we need something called fun suite and Makito. Fun Suite on Makito is basically like us pulling a mock mock.net and your MS test or X unit and all that kind of stuff in the in the .net world. How do we go about doing that? There is there, there is this thing called a a build file. So this is build.spt and you basically go and basically add dependencies, right? So you go and say um, uh, I'm not going to pretend that I know these. I'm just going to try and uh, find it off the bat it's supposed to kind of help you out but of course I have a couple of sites in here that will tell me hey here's what you want to add and all that there it is so you basically go like this do you see that little tiny thing that's showing on the on the right side up here this is the guy that's gonna pull these packages in there's also this nice thing in here where you can go and say <laughs> I'm doing control period because of Visual Studio but if you go and say update dependencies it will update so this is basically the dependency name right uh, or sorry the organization and this is the dependency name 
and then the, this is the version of the dependency and I think this is what you're targeting I I don't remember I don't remember what this is but we need to pull these dependencies you'll see a whole bunch of things this this little side here of the world is gonna explode you're gonna see all these libraries being pulled I think from Maven I don't know what artifactory they're using it's been a long time but uh, look it basically pulled all these dependencies for you so this is the core Scala test framework and then you also have the Makito and Makito is what I use to kind of mock these dependencies okay let's do this so I can go here now and say test right and it's gonna complain if I do control period oh this guy needs to extend a uh, fun suite like this there you go and then I can go here and say test there you go and then we can basically say should uh, add students or something like that this is how we basically write our tests in net at least you know with the standard community and all that uh, I don't like these automated kind of um, uh, automatic in the browser kind of uh, sorry in the editor kind of adding the variable name so I'm gonna add I'm gonna say this name is this okay so just like any test we have a given we have a win we have a then right and I can go here and say well you know mock up a student for me right so here's Val Val is like how do I explain Val there's Val and there's Var <laughs> and you can define things if they're I think it's their if they're final values you don't have to call them Var I think that makes them immutable if I'm not mistaken so if I go here and say random student I can go here and say mock now now it's asking for the thing mock and then I could pass student here as a dependency let's see if it can find it there you go so here's your student and then we can go and say so does that mean if I go random student dot name equals is it gonna complain no I actually don't remember what Val was for <laughs> but anyway here is input student which is also from this guy I'm only doing this naming convention because of the, like the naming of the variables plays very well with where you set them up so it's contextual even though they're exactly the same values so this is inserted student which comes from input student and then the last thing is expected student which comes from inserted student so they're all the same the same va uh, variable the only difference here is that I am setting them up in a in a particular naming convention so they fit what I'm trying to do okay that's cool uh, I think there is a thing here called before and this is not something I have uh, done to prepare for but I really want to show you like well let's just do it here first and then I'll tell you what we can do with it here's Val here is storage broker mock so here's mock and here's my i storage broker I mocked my storage broker right and then I also have val uh, student service this is what I'm really trying to test and this is just a new student service and this student service will take the storage broker mock as an input parameter here's the cool thing about this in .NET you can't really go and say you have to go and say mock that object like this which is really ugly I don't like it in here it says yeah you mock this I know that it's a mock or even though it's still the same value that's pretty cool that's pretty cool because that basically means hey dude you know you don't have to worry about calling an object I know this is a mock it's gonna pretend to be you know that mock it's gonna have this additional capabilities and functionalities without you having to say that object that's beauty I love this about Scala I don't know if you've noticed but I do love Scala uh, add the type annotation yes please and also in here I want to add the type annotation if I say I storage broker here yeah see it doesn't care if this is a mocked object because it still honors the same the same uh, type okay now what now we need to set up our uh, thing so our storage broker mock so I need to say when storage broker mock dot insert student with input student then go ahead and return 
We need a we need a dependency here. What are we pulling? Makito. Okay. So you see all of this Makito stuff. If I do this, that should just save me. But I think it's like a lot of dependencies. I guess it's it's. I think it's trying to be smart. So returns and then this is inserted student. I think that's how you do it. If I'm not mistaken. Oh oh, where return? Let's see. Then return. Then return. And then this is inserted student. So that's your mocked area. So we just just like that, we basically mocked that when this is passed, you have this. Cool. So far, so good. Now, let's test this. So you have val actual student equals. And then this is your student model. And then I want to call my student service dot add student with input student. So this is my actual student. Now I can go and say assert actual student equal equal expected student. Okay, it's very straightforward, no problem there, right? Scala also has equal 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 like JavaScript, right? And I think equal 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 in Scala is the reference comparison versus the value comparison. I think that's sweet. I don't know if that's true, I don't remember, but I think that's pretty sweet because in C sharp you have to go find another library to kind of compare the value versus comparing the references, which is kind of annoying. So points there for Scala. Also, I want to now verify. So I'm going to go here and say verify, and then here is your storage broker mock dot uh, times, I think, once. So that's been called once. I'll tell you what I think about this part very shortly. Um, and then you basically go and say dot insert student with input student. So this is my verify. So this is my way of basically in C sharp of going and saying storage broker mock dot verify. Right. And here's your broker. And then you go and say broker dot. Uh, <laughs> what happened? Uh, broker dot insert uh, student input student right times once like this. There must be a way here in Scala where you can go and say times once as well. I'm I'm not sure. I don't remember. But this is this guy here is basically the equivalent of this, right? I don't know if putting the times at the top here before you actually call this. I don't like that. But that's a, I think that's a Makito thing. I think we can work around that in Scala, probably. I'm not sure. Okay, so that's a failing test, my friend. So I basically going and saying, this is my friends here is all the tests that we need. And I think that should be good. Let's go run these tests and see what happens. Run. I don't know why is this saying green. Maybe it's it's a build thing. It should fail. Yeah, there you go. The failure here is not, so it's basically saying an implementation is missing, which is sweet because all what we have in there is just these three question marks. So these question marks are the equivalent of you going and saying new, not implemented, error. And I think throw new, something like that. Throw new, not implemented, error. That you'll get the exact same problem. If you run like this, there you go. So the exact same problem. No problem there, right? So that's, again, points for Scala. You know, you can just go and do this and say that's not implemented exception, right? That's awesome. It's you, it's a it's a really artistic way of expressing uh, not being able to, to... It's an artistic way of saying that there's nothing here yet. I don't have thoughts about this yet. So question mark, question mark, question mark. It's pretty cool. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Uh, we're going to write a function, and this function will be return. Uh, there's no this. It's storage broker. Can I actually do this? Let's see. This dot. Ooh, I can. Nice. Dot insert, and then this is the student. Sweet. And, of course, the IDE is telling you you don't need return, dude. It, it doesn't mean anything in here because it's it's trying to do as little talking as possible. So it basically considers the last statement as vast statement, right? So let's go here and run this test again. That should pass, I think. 
There you go. So that's a pass. Right? Here's my test. Here's my... I don't know, honestly, why it's not showing... Let's see. Oh, yeah. So you're basically showing failing versus passing. Yeah, it should add students. It's very sweet. It shows you everything you need to uh, see. This is a very standard friendly programming language right so if you're trying to implement the standard and you want to use Scala it's definitely a simple again the origins of the standard and how I started kind of building these ideas came from you know working a lot with functional programming languages learning from a lot of people that you know have this kind of uh, uh, heart to kind of allow me to learn something like that and you know build on top of it very simple language. I think there got to be a way here where you can go and say, I don't know, diff, is it init or something like that? And then you basically go and say, I want to initialize the, the, the service and the broker the same way we do it in C sharp. So you don't have to reinitialize them in here. This is, this here is really dumb. We should, we should initialize these every run with the test. There is probably a way to do it. Uh, that's not, that's not the point of this. So anyway, I'm going to give you this code kind of if you if you never played with Scala before this is definitely a great place to start here is VCS uh, share project on github standard Scala origin uh, shared by add account login via github sure why not this thing is gonna make me uh, uh, continue let's see here yep you have been successfully authorized because I'm, I'm literally living on github so this is origin, this is not private, uh, description, uh, example, demo, project, and Scala to implement the standard. Okay, so I'm sharing this project out here. You should be able, let's see here, wow, look at all of these things. I don't think we need idea stuff in here or the libraries, you just need the source code. Yeah, it should be smart enough to do this. Here you go. Add... Here's your Scala program right there. So now if I click on this, it should open up a new page for you. It should basically tell you here is your Scala app. Right, so I'm gonna add a readme here. I'm gonna say this is a demo for Scala. There you go. Beautiful, right? You have everything, and I don't think I should have added this BS, BSP as well, whatever that is. Oh, that's, no, they, I would probably need that. I don't know. I think it's a JetBrains thing. Okay, so this is that uh, beautiful language. Uh, you know, take a look, see you know how the language works. It's very, very, um, very easy to implement certain ideas in this language. Very easy to kind of uh, bring you know your thoughts. It'll teach you a lot of things. It has some superiority in terms of certain implementations it has some superiority when it comes to it makes you think like a functional as a programming language you know a, a software scientist uh, but it also more importantly it has a lot of nice tricks you know there's for comprehension uh, there's pattern matching a lot of crazy stuff you know you can do asynchronous thing I think use future you know so many different things where do you where do you find all these things about uh, Scala if you look at if you just say tour in Scala, which is basically where I was kind of refreshing my memory on it, you'll find all kinds of nice stuff in here. It has traits. Traits are basically interfaces. Uh, I'll drop that. I'll drop that link ov over in the uh, description as well, so you can see. You can see inner classes, classes. But then again, you know, such as the case with every programming language or technology, it's about the community, right? You know, how much people are building you know, libraries that can support, you know, what if you want to add security, how hard is it to add security? You know, they have a thing I think called, uh, was it Sprite or something like that? It's the equivalent of the entity framework, right? You basically go and say, or Spark or something like that. Uh, for the most part, Scala is being used for uh, big data stuff, right? You're doing data processing and stuff like that. Psh, go to Scala, it's great. But you can use it as a general programming language. You can build, you know, APIs and stuff like that. I hope you find this useful. Uh, I hope you find this kind of uh, a little bit eye-opening in terms of how to build systems, you know, uh, standard compliance systems in different programming languages. I'll continue to kind of explore different languages. I'm still fighting with Rust a little bit. Maybe we can do it in C++. Uh, maybe we can do it in Java. It's going to be the easiest in Java. It's a little chatty, but it's going to be a, a lot similar 
to Scala when it comes to Java, maybe Kotlin, maybe some of these programming languages. We'll see how things go. Uh, I hope I hope that this is a, a useful content for you. And if you have any questions, comments, uh, concerns, please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in another video. Take care.